Hi there, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today, we are discussing uh, pineapple production. Of course, pineapple have, have contributed tremendously to the income of farmers, and of course, in the past and presently. Today with me to discuss this important topic is Mr. Comtel Francois, who is a farmer from the Region 6 Agricultural District, and uh, he, he heals from River Dory. And Mr. Eloy Alexis, who is a regional officer attached to the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, he is the regional supervisor for Region 6, and of course, he is also a pineapple expert. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program. Okay, um, Mr. Alexis, could you give the public um, what it is, what entails your role as the regional supervisor in Region 6? Well. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Mr. Sidney, for inviting me on this program here to provide some insight into um, what is happening presently with um, the pineapple subsector and also to shed some light as to what is really happening on the ground in Region 6. Um, as you rightly said, I'm the regional co um, supervisor for Region 6. Um, as you all know, that Region 6 is one of the most dynamic um, region on the island in terms of um, food production and um, it is a vast geographical area. It starts from um, Kachime all the way down to River Dory. So um, in that, we can safely say that it is probably the most, um, have the most concentrated number of farmers in the region. And we, down at this region, um, produce a whole gamut of produce from vegetable to tree crops. So presently at the extension office, we have a, a country of um, five extension officers serving the various points of the region. Okay. Mr. Faswa, could you tell us exactly, I mean, tell the public who you are. I know you are a famous pineapple mm -hmm. farmer, and of course you are a dynamic farmer too, you're well diverse. So could you tell us who you are? First of all, I must say thanks, Mr. Sidney, for inviting me on this program. And um, I want to tell you, first of all, my, my name is Comdan Faswa. I'm from Chozelle. My farm is in River Dore. Um, I do pineapple as my main crop. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I have about um, 75,000 pineapple trees. And um, we, are, we, are, we have an, a cooperative form. And um, we intend to produce more pineapples as the years go by. Mr. Eloy, could you give mm -hmm. us an example of, for example, um, how did pineapple become a sort of a dominant crop in mm -hmm. your region? All right. Well, um, I can extend back um, from the early 90s, pineapple was identified as a suitable crop in our agricultural diversification thrust. Mm -hmm. And from there, knowing back the, um, well, the, um, the, um, area in which pineapple was um, grown mostly in St. Lucia was the Roseau area. Mm -hmm. So that was the most dynamic area in terms of acreage. Mm -hmm. And from there, as the tourism industry expanded, farmers saw the opportunity which exists in the pineapple industry, knowing that there's a niche, a domestic niche market for pineapple. So a lot of the farmers in Region 6 gravitated towards pineapple production. So right now, region, um, the millet area is no longer the most dynamic area <laughs> with regards to pineapple production. Mm. The balance has, of the pendulum has shifted to region six. But how did it shift? I mean, was it, so, uh, did you influence, your, your officers influence that shift? Well, um, the momentum was going. I had a lot to play with it, um, especially um, during the conceptualization of the pineapple expansion and rehabilitation project, mm -hmm. which was um, sponsored on the special framework of assistance 
SFA 2005. Mm -hmm. So a lot of farmers came, came on board. As I rightly said, the farmers gradually will see opportunity which exists in the marketplace and farmers will try to avail themselves of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So the farmers began going into pineapple and there were a lot of limitations during that time. Mm -hmm. One of the major limitations was um, obtaining planting materials. So um, in that the arrangement that we had at the time where farmers used to sell a hundred or maybe a two hundred planting material to other farmers or their friends, but that was not sufficient for somebody <coughs> wanting to establish, let's say, two to three acres of pineapple, or what we can safely say, somebody who wants to go into commercial pineapple production. Okay. All right? Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Compton, I mean, I know commodities sometimes are more market-driven. Um, what got you into pineapples? Um, I've been looking at bananas very closely, mm -hmm. and I saw um, bananas were kind of deteriorating. Farmers were leaving bananas, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, our industry, main industry is tourism. Mm -hmm. Let me try and do something that I'll, I'll, get, I'll get about five cents or ten cents from every tourist that comes to St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. I, I started with, pine, with pineapples. I started with 500 plants. I started, it was doing very well. I opened up to a thousand and I kept growing, 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 and I am where I am today. So, but how, how did you get, in terms of the, the, the actual um, cultivation of the pineapple, you know, how were you able to get the technical advice? I mean, would you, would, you, would you get the support from the ministry? Oh, yes. I have been working very closely with the Ministry of Agriculture, mm -hmm. also AICA, mm -hmm. and um, even BIT. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a bit of traveling myself, too. I yeah, saw so in Cuba, what they were doing in Cuba when I came back. I, 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 try, I tried to implement what they were doing. And with the Ministry of Agriculture, I said, they have been very, working very closely with me. They've been very cooperative. They've been very helpful. Okay, and from then, Eloy, you, are you saying that um, with Mr. Compton coming in, um, how were you able to get other farmers? I mean, I'm sure right now they, they, they formed a group. Mm -hmm. I mean, before you, they got to that level, how, what influenced them? Did you have uh, 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 some influence in getting them on board and into pineapple production? Yes, um, as I said, on the SFA 2005, mm -hmm. Um, what we did in 2009, we had a gentleman from Trinidad and Tobago to come down here and to conduct a rapid assessment of the pineapple subsector. Okay. He came in, he did just that, and from that, a number of recommendations was um, put forward. So we went in and we um, really got these recommendations, put the intervention in place. Mm -hmm. So we had workshops in um, different aspects of pineapple production indices of maturity, um, post-harvest handling, soil fertility, and we also had a workshop on leadership training to farmers and farmers' organization in record keeping, um, IT, information technology. And um, they also, under that program, almost a quarter million dollars was given to the Pineapple Cooperative in the form of inputs to Pineapple farmers. So a lot of farmers see that as an incentive, as an impetus mm -hmm. to go into pineapple production, knowing that these inputs were subsidized. And another factor which contributed to Region 6 being right now the most dominant area in terms of acreage, a lot of, you get a, quite a few hotels in the Sufre area, the well, Sufre area. Hold that point, because I'm very, it's very interesting. <laughs> we are due for a break. Uh, we are due for uh, what I call a pineapple break. We'll be right back. All right.
C'est pas oui, je Et vous même, Janet, si pas ni sous tout pas ni volé. Radio Lassany is a crime. Let us all fight it. A message from the Pradial Larceny Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture and Mamai Moshi. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. And my guest today is Mr. Compton Francois, who is a farmer from Region 6, and Mr. Eloy Alexis, who is a regional supervisor attached to the Ministry of Agriculture. Eli, what is very interesting to me, and I, I always tell people mm -hmm. that farmer, you don't have to tell farmers to, um, to plant anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Once there's a market, they'll put, they will go into the crop, okay? So and I'm, uh, that, I, the point you made about uh, the hotel in mm -hmm. the south and southwestern, mm -hmm. I think to me that's key. Could you elucidate a little more on that? All right. Well, as I said earlier on, we have a niche market for pineapple in St. Lucia, and the target market is the hotel sector. Um, pineapple consumption is unparalleled to any other um, commodity presently at the hotel. Okay. And farmers has recognized that, and farmers are getting premium prices for their pineapple. Mm -hmm. If somebody, there's no other, during the heat days of banana, right now the price at which pineapple is being fetched per pound, there's, or there, there has been any time where banana used to get that same price. Okay. Farmers are actually getting three dollars up to four dollars a pound of pineapple at the hotel, mm -hmm. and if you were to ask me, that is top price mm -hmm. considering the cost of production. And um, so mm -hmm. there is presently no commodity, agricultural commodity, in which farmer is getting that kind of returns from. So, Mr. Compton, that is why you decided to gravitate mm -hmm. to pineapple production. Now you are involved in it. I, I mean, I mean the market. Is, is, is wide open. I mean, are you satisfying the market? Uh, is there a glut on the market? Or the de is the, de the demand mm -hmm. still there? Well, I must be honest with you, there's a, there's a demand for pineapples. Mm -hmm. Because up to mm -hmm. now, I'm only supplying about three hotels. Okay. And the orders come in every day. I have to just reject some of the, some of the persons who call for pineapples, you know? So, so you, 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 you only supply to the hotels. So what, what happened to mm -hmm. the ordinary man in the street? Well, if there's any time where I have a glut, a slight glut, I come to the market for a few words, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, I, pineapple is a business, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm out to make well, money. But is a business. Yes, yeah, a business, right? I'm taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm out there trying to make money. If I, if there's a, if there's, ex, if I have excess pineapples, I might come to the market or go around. Mm -hmm. And if a thousand pounds of pineapples, I might only score a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. But if a thousand pounds of pineapples, I go to the hotel, I'm scoring four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You know, so, I mean, uh, it, it's a business, as I said, I'm out to make money. I'm investing seriously into pineapples. Mm -hmm. I invest in, invest in more. Mm -hmm. But up to now, we cannot supply the demand of pineapples, not even to the hotels in St. Lucia. Okay. As a matter of fact, we have to try, we have to teach our St. Lucians, teach our people mm -hmm. to eat more pineapple. Mm -hmm. I'm even afraid to do that now because there's no pineapples for them yet. Because mm -hmm. what we have is just for the hotels now. Okay, now, you are now involved as a farmer. Um, you're talking about yourself or are you talking about a group? Because now I was told that you are from the sales into a group. Give us an idea of how that group came about. Well, we were, we were doing pineapple individually. Mm -hmm. And we realized when it comes to assistance, it was kind of difficult. You know, so we, we got together. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have a group called um, the, 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 the St. Lucia Pineapple Association. Okay. And um, we have over almost 200 members now. Okay. And um, you know we we are we are we are doing very well. Mm -hmm. We are trying to supply the hotel. I said even if the group. But yeah, what I'm saying. But if if you have 200 members, I mean they have land, of course. Mm -hmm. So why is it the, the, the demand? I mean you cannot access that demand. Mm -hmm. um, well, not, I'll be honest with you. Eh? Not all the farmers have land. Okay. You know we need um, we need we need more land. And again, you're talking about mechanized agriculture. Mm -hmm. Some farmers have land, but they have it in slopes. Mm -hmm. You cannot bring in machine there. The Ministry of Agriculture has uh, the tractor available. Uh, you know, we, 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 we could get our plowing done, but you cannot put the tractor on slopes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have flat land. So now we have to secure the little bit of our flat land left for expansion of agriculture. But within your area, I mean, in, in, in the area where you, where you farm, 
uh, you do not have, I mean, government does not have um, land, flat land there, where you can at least put a case and get lands leased from government? What you've said there is very, very good. Because what we have done, um, the year before last, mm -hmm. we put in a petition mm -hmm. for lands which we realized was going to housing. We are saying, please leave it for agriculture. Good. You know, on the petition, we had over 2,000 signatures mm -hmm. on that, in that petition. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole is a hold up now for the housing project. So how much, how much land is that you're talking about? About 80 acres. Flat, prime land. Mm -hmm. Flat, prime land. Good. Which, but th there was agriculture before. There was pineapples before in that area. The Danes had some pineapples there. Mm -hmm. You know, after they left, the thing has died out. And now we have persons who come into the cooperative mm -hmm. And they would they are saying we're interested in pineapple, but we don't have the land. We would love to go into it. Mm -hmm. So I think now is the time where we have to put our best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Let us see what we can do. Supply the people with the land mm -hmm. and let them expand our pineapple program. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Let me just add something further mm -hmm. with regards to demand and supply. Right now, the irony is um, our farmers, the, we have approximately 60 acres of pineapple on the island. Mm -hmm and St. Lucia imports, let's say, something within the region of 200 tons of pineapple every year. And our local farmers are only able to produce 60 tons per year. So you're looking at a vacuum of, let's say, two, we import two to three times mm -hmm. what is produced locally. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's a big vacuum in terms of um, the supply of pineapple mm -hmm. and the demand. Mr. Camden is one such farmer. He is catering for three hotels in the Region 6 area. And sometimes he is not able to really um, deliver pineapple on time to these people. So you have to go and outsource pineapple from farmers in Millet. And so, um, um, with regards to the Pineapple Cooperative, the Pineapple Cooperative was um, conceptualized in um, 2009 out of the need because the farmers back then used to really operate in a fragmented marketplace that everybody was doing what they please and okay. without any standards and and you know that they had a lot of complaints mm -hmm. coming from certain hotels about the quality of our pineapple mm -hmm. so um when the pineapple cooperative came on board um the government of saint lucia vested um the um, parking house at the river dory estate to the pineapple cooperative and they also gave them one acre of land so that would be the permanent resident of the Pineapple Cooperative. The Ministry of Agriculture also gave them a chiller so that um, they can use our storage facility for pineapple. So are you saying now we, what's the program now? Forget Region 6. Mm. Look at the other regions where the environment is conducive for, for the production mm. of pineapple. Let's go back to millet. Are you mm. saying that you're going to get the millet farmers back into production at least to meet that shortfall? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do right now. Um, presently, there's a, a subgrouping called the Tatsut um, Pineapple um, Group. And um, they got some assistance from the parliament, parliamentary representative for um, the ancillary canneries area mm -hmm. to really um, target 60, not 20 farmers. And um, they attended a workshop. And um, at the end of that workshop, each farmer was given 200 plants of pineapple. And um, as I said, the, the situation with pineapple for St. Lucia to be self-sufficient in well, pineapple. Well, that thought, I yeah. think again, we're moving fast and furious. Yeah. We are due for a break. We're discussing pineapple production. Mm -hmm. I know your, your taste buds are uh, uh, mm. watering down now, so we'll be right back. Right. Agriculture, one of the pillars of St. Lucia's economic development, creating opportunities for earning a living for the farmer and his family. From the field to the kitchen, the St. Lucians are finding creative ways of using fruits, crops, and vegetables grown locally. From local seasonings to special brews, from aquaculture to the cultivation of local herbs for export. A strong agriculture industry strengthens the economy. The country needs your support, so buy local. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Uh, Mr. Compton, what, I mean, nothing that is successful gets success just that easily. I'm sure you all have had some you know, ups and downs, some constraints and stuff like that. What, can you tell us exactly, I mean, what are your problems at this point in time? 
Okay. Um, one of our biggest problems in pineapple is irrigation. Mm -hmm. If you know Riverdale very well, we have the water down there, but it's in a steep slope, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we had one or two farmers. We, 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 we had a, got a pump, mm -hmm. but then you find the pump was not able to pump that elevation. Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of give it up. Mm -hmm. So now we have, I, I, am, I personally am doing water, rainwater harvesting. Okay. And um, I have about three tanks, say about 30,000 gallons of water. But you find when it is dry, 30,000 gallons of water is no water for pineapples. Mm -hmm. Because right now my tanks are dry. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, we're just working with, I'm working with Aika now, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get some funding for me mm -hmm. to be able to pump water from the river mm -hmm. into my tanks and probably w introduce, um, bring in one or two other farmers, mm -hmm. you know, so they two could be shared, share that water also. So we could have our production even a little bit better. Apart from Ica, oh, um, are you getting assistance from any other agencies out there? Well, the Taiwanese have helped quite a bit. I must say the Ministry of Agriculture, Aika, the Taiwanese, BIT, all these people have worked with us. Mm -hmm. And um, I, must, I, 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 always, I always remember them, and I want to say thanks to all of them. Okay, great. Eloy, um, mm -hmm. let's look at figures now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about shortfalls, so the demand, the demand is there. The demand is there. How can you lure other farmers in other areas that are conducive for pineapple production to get into pineapple? You want to go to an Ica pineapple. Can you, mm -hmm. Take us through that, that process in terms of right. cash. I mean, production, mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. Well, what the Ministry of Agriculture has done through the um, um, tissue culture um, facility at Union, mm -hmm. Um, they have um, gone into the production of tissue culture plantlets of pineapple. Mm -hmm. And right now they are subsidizing the price of these tissue culture pineapple plants. So um, one of the um, obstacle in commercial pineapple production for our local farmers is the high initial cost of establishing, let's say, one acre of pineapple. Okay. To establish one acre of pineapple, it will cost the farmer within the region of 30 to 40,000 EC dollars. Okay. And that is a, a huge, a huge sum of money, invest, yeah. initial investment. Mm -hmm. And knowing, knowing, knowing the fact that the farmer is not like vegetable, which is a three months crop, mm -hmm. the farmer have to wait at least nine months or a year and two months before mm -hmm. they can get any return from mm -hmm. that investment. Mm -hmm. So as I said, the ministry has um, a have a mechanism in place so that these farmers can get this planting material at a subsidized price. But and are you saying farmers are aware of that? Because you see, one of the problems I have, and which takes me to the, that other thing about, I just listened to a news item some time ago, which a farmer from Region 6 who farmed yeah. in Dewash. Mm -hmm. And I, I know he has problems, you know, uh, with the road. Mm -hmm. I know it's pretty bad. Yeah. But he went about saying that he does not see, you don't know who is extension officer is, mm -hmm. you know, and I find that it's very strange in this day and age, mm -hmm. you know, and at that said farmer, I would like to tell him, if he falls ill or his, any member of the farmers fall ill, whether call. he will stay home, mm -hmm. but I'm sure he'll run to the hospital, mm -hmm. run, run as far as Castries to the mm -hmm. doctor to, to get help, mm -hmm. all right? If his vehicle is, 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 is punctured somewhere up mm -hmm. in the wash, he will not leave it there. I'm sure he has a cell phone. He'll call, call a mechanic to come and assist him. So, I mean, he knows where the, farm, the, 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 the office, office, yeah. office is, mm -hmm. right? It's right next to Bath Nursery. I mean, I'm sure he knows Bellevue Farmers and Cooperative. Farm, without getting in short, this farmer has been to the office several times. When we have inputs or any um, incentives for farmers, he always finds himself there. Not, I'm not trying to really bash the farmer. Mm -hmm. But this farmer in question, he is one of our core farmers. And that... Um, Actually, I did not really um, see the television clipping, mm -hmm. but um, I got to know the news from my other colleagues. Mm -hmm. So um, the following day, I went up there, and I've been there on numerous occasions. And um, it's very hard to find that farmer whenever you go up there to find that farmer on his holding mm -hmm. because he farms at different locations mm -hmm. other than the Daywash area. Mm -hmm. So presently, I do understand his frustration. The road condition leading to Daywash especially from Mini to Mazeli is in a deplorable state. If you don't have a four-wheel drive, it is practically impossible to go there on, on a, a normal car. Most time, because every time I go up there, I have to park my car halfway and then walk the rest of the way. So far less a farmer who's producing, because that same farmer in question, he had a very a successful crop of um, cabbage. He had 10,000 cabbage heads. Mm -hmm in immaculate condition and he was harvesting 
So that is a problem for the farmer in itself to really get that produce to the market because mm -hmm. we're talking about 10,000 heads of cabbage. Mm -hmm. Can he pay people per bag to transport it all the way to Pont Saint Jacques? Mm -hmm. And I do understand the farmer's um, <laughs> frustration, but yet at the same time, for him to go on the record and say he does not see extension of his so how are I you, personally. How, so how are you going to obscure that in terms of the pineapple production? Mm -hmm. Right now we need, I mean, I'm sure you know how the acreage required now yeah. to offset that, mm -hmm. that importation we're talking mm -hmm. about. How are you going to entice other farmers to get into it? And what's the, rev, what's the return? What's the, what's mm -hmm. the profitability in an acre of, um, of, pineapple. Of, of, of pineapple? Well, for us, St. Lucia to be on the um, self-sufficiency pathway, we need, as I said, we have at least 60 acres of pineapple on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at, let's say, 120 to 150 acres in order for us to be self-sufficient in pineapple production. Mm -hmm. As I said, the um, systems we can use to really lure farmer into pineapple production is one, they can get the planting material at a subsidized price. They can become a member of the pineapple cooperative where input was made available to the cooperative to sell at subsidized price to these farmers. Okay. So the cost of production you're looking at will, um, will go down significantly if they were to become a member because they're going to um, derive certain benefits from being a member. Also, the pineapple cooperative is also buying pineapple from members okay. to market at the hotels. Mm -hmm. So these are all the incentives that are in place for members. The Ministry of Agriculture also have tractor service for plowing. So they get that done at subsidized price also. Okay. Mr. Compton, do you have any final words to the public out there, your other farmers in the other regions, other than Region 6? Um, I would like to encourage farmers. Pineapple is, that's just the beginning of pineapple. Mm -hmm. We have a long way to go. Because if you go to the hotels, every day the, the hotels use pineapple. And not just the hotels, mm -hmm. the restaurants. Mm -hmm. The in, people around, you know, mm -hmm. would like to be tasting pineapple, having a, have a piece of pineapple every day. So we really need to get together. We, need, we, need, we need, really need to work together with the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. We need to work with AICA. We need to work with BIT. Mm -hmm. We need to work with the Taiwanese. Cardi, mm -hmm. because Cardi is also important, mm -hmm. because they will help us quite a bit to show us um, the quality, what quality we require, you know, and that has brought us a long way. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to work together, and I think soon we will be successful. Mm -hmm. Any final words from you? Well, um, with regards to um, the returns of um, pineapple, mm -hmm. and um, if anybody is interested in going into pineapple, as I said, in 2009, we did a rapid assessment of the industry and um, we um, um, had a number of interventions. So we have presently three demonstration plot, mm -hmm. one by Mr. Compton Francois, measuring one acre, mm -hmm. one at Cadi Research Station in um, Richfond, measuring half an acre, and one at Bellevue Cooperative at Balenbush. That's an organic pineapple okay. demonstration right. plot measuring one acre. Okay. So if anybody out there wants to go into pineapple production or the current crop of people that are in pineapple production mm -hmm. wants to see the new dispensation they in pineapple out. production, they ought to come to these okay. um, facilities to see how because before what farmers used to do is to really plant pineapple three, four feet apart. Okay. So but right I, I now, stop you there because I yeah. think we come to the end. I know it's very interesting, but <laughs> we come to the end of the program. All I want right. to thank you, Mr. Compton, for coming on the program. Welcome. Also, Mr. Eloy thank Alexis, you. the regional supervisor. And I wish you you well. I, and that I mm -hmm. tell all the farmers about this because we need to get the farming community going mm -hmm. and to at least get our people to eat healthy. So viewers, thank you for viewing. I want to thank the um, the NTN team for assisting us in this program, even if um, Mr. Compton didn't bring the pineapples for, for tasting <laughs> today. I hope we'll bring them some other time. Oh. And um, I want to thank you again for viewing. I am Philip Sidney saying goodbye. Agriculture on the move. 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 Every call a move, ma. Every call, on the move. Every call a move, ma.